Hi, this is Rhett. We're uh, continuing uh, the ECG uh, introduction. Here's, uh, we're on to the QRS interval. I kind of cleaned this up again, took away all that uh, other stuff about the PR stuff. Uh, the QRS interval, this right here, is what, uh, I'll circle it, Q, oops, if I can. So we'll circle the QRS interval right there. Um, so that's the depolarization of the ventricles. Um, it's also where the uh, the atrium repolarized, but it's kind of subsumed in this waveform, so you don't actually see a distinct uh, repolarization of the atria. Um, but the best way to think about what's going on here is that the ventricles are depolarizing. It should be around 120 milliseconds, one, two, zero, which is uh, equal to three small boxes. So that's a good rule of thumb. If, uh, if this QRS is wider than three small boxes, then you might have an issue. Uh, but I'm going to start off with uh, just a quick thing about a pathologic Q wave. So this this wave could uh, give you a hint that something is going on, like a, they had had a previous heart attack or something. Um, and the way you figure that out is that it has to be, if your Q wave is bigger than uh, 2 by 2, and by that I mean 2 by 2, the 2 by 2 small boxes. So if it's, if the depth... Um, if the amplitude difference, if it's deeper than um, two millimeters or 2, 0.2 millivolts, then and it's also wider than uh, 0.04 seconds, or uh, so that's two boxes by two boxes, then that is by definition a pathologic Q wave, and you can say, you know, if you're interpreting ECG and you see that, you can say, you know, uh, they seem to have a pathologic Q wave. But, you know, it's not 100% sp specific. It's one of the more tenuous signs that something might have happened. Um, it's probably not the most important thing in an ECG, um, but it's worth noting if you see it. Uh, so the other things I want to talk about, uh, about a widened QRS, is I'm going to briefly go over bundle branch blocks. Um, there can be two kinds of bundle branch blocks, and that's a right um, bundle branch block. Oops, sorry, it's hard to type in this thing. And then a left. Um, so the way I like to look at uh, bundle branch blocks is you want to look at V1 and V6. Uh, in a right bundle branch block, you'll see something like, okay, here's my P wave, and then the R will look something like this. And this is called the R wave, this is your S wave, and this is called the R prime wave, because this is still, this is all the uh, the QRS complex, and often this is called the RSR or RSR prime complex. Um, so this is indicative of a, uh, a bundle branch block, a right bundle branch block. I, uh, maybe a good way to remember this is rabbit ears. You could think of two R's and rabbit ears. Um, something else in V6, so you'll see it'll look uh, pretty normal, and then it's like, oh no, Q wave. And then this S wave is like this, and that's called like a slurred S. I'm not going to write out slurred, but you can kind of see what I mean, where it's like, uh, it takes a long time to get back up to normal. So that's a slurred S, and these rabbit ears, that's a, a right bundle branch block. And then I'll try to do a left bundle branch block here. So again, we'll look at V1 and V6. And um, so in V1, what you'll see is kind of funky. It'll actually look like this. So this is a little too too wide. It's usually a little shorter than that. But it actually looks like an upside-down waveform. So the P wave is upside down. Um, the QRS complex looks upside down. And then here you have like an S wave that seems to be upside down. So it's kind of funky, and it looks completely upside down. And this is the, the really indicative part is in V6. So you'll see something like a P wave. Oops. You'll see a P wave. It'll come up, and then almost like this. And then you have this like weird S like that. And it, honestly, the way I always think about it is that it looks like Batman. Like he has these two little ears and it's upside down. So you could think of Batman hanging upside down and I don't know that he's left-handed or something like that. It might help you. So right bundle branch block is the rabbit ears. Uh, left bundle branch block is like looks like the Batman. V1 and V6 are the way you find out um, if you have a bundle branch uh, block. Uh, or the, the best leads to figure out a bundle branch block. Uh, and that makes sense. So those are precordial leads. They're looking right at the heart. So if there's an issue with conduction in the heart, those are going to be the ones to, to sort of get the best picture of it. 
Okay, so then we're going to move on to ST segment, and I think I think by now everyone is, knows about ST segment elevations and depressions. Uh, so I'm going to go over those really briefly. Um, basically, this is where, uh, in terms of conduction, the ventricles are depolarized. Uh, this should be isoelectric, so this should not be elevated or depressed. Um, if it is elevated or depressed, just a sign of, you know, either damage or uh, inflammation. Something's going on. And so the electrical signal either has a hard time getting back to normal or it goes too deep, etc. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty brief except to say that um, you don't want to talk about SD elevation or depression unless it's significant. By significant, I mean this should be at least two small boxes or, you know, two small boxes or 0 0.2, 0 0.2 millivolts. Um, and if you have a, de a decrease or an increase like that, then I'd say, you know, I think there's some uh, uh, ST elevation or depression, um, and it'll be pretty noticeable. Like, if you're thinking, like, I don't know, is it depressed or is it elevated? If you're torn about it, then it probably isn't, but because when you see an elevation, it's it's pretty stark. Um, uh, I will say that elevation is associated more with myocardial infarction, so you want to be much more, obviously it's much more concerning if you see elevation depression. Um, you know, that could be cardiac ischemia or uh, coronary ischemia, um, but it also could be something like hypokalemia, so you want to, like, you should still be concerned, obviously, um, but you can widen your search about possible causes. Uh, so I'm going to... I'm going to finish there and we'll uh, try to finish up in the, in the next video.